electric vehicles, EVs, might soon become a thing of the past. Thanks to an exciting breakthrough in zero-emission technology, the compressed air engine, this revolutionary design has the potential to completely overhaul the automotive industry and change the way we think about transportation, delivering unmatched fuel efficiency and practicality. These engines not only surpass traditional internal combustion engines and EVs in performance but also stand out as the most eco-friendly option available. Hey, if you're enjoying this so far, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe for more content like this. Though compressed air engines may seem like a modern marvel, their origins stretch back to the 19th century, during the Second Industrial Revolution. The pioneering My system was the first successful compressed air engine, featuring a single-stage design where air expanded in one piston before being expelled. To extend its range, the air was reheated by passing through a hot water tank before entering the engine, renowned for their reliability and power. My engines were intermittently used in TRS and M locomotives, however, as fossil fuels and internal combustion engines, which were easier to produce and offered greater power, became more prevalent. Compressed air engines fell out of favor and were nearly forgotten for almost 200 years. The 21st century, driven by the same spirit of innovation that characterized the Second Industrial Revolution, saw a resurgence of interest in compressed air engines. By the early 2010s, companies began to explore this technology again integrating it with internal combustion engines for maximum efficiency. Leading the charge was CHO, which reintroduced compressed air engines through experimental hybrid models like the CHO 208 and 208S, dubbed hybrid air technology. These prototypes boasted remarkable fuel efficiency, achieving up to 141 mpg. The secret was using compressed air for acceleration and starting while relying on a gasoline engine to maintain speeds at low RPMs. Drivers could also switch between running exclusively on air or gas, highlighting the versatile utility of compressed air. These hybrid air PS featured a dual powertrain system, a conventional one, 2L4 cylinder gasoline engine and a compressed air powertrain. The compressed air system included a tank located beneath the trunk, a low-pressure tank near the rear axle acting as an expansion chamber, and a hydraulic system in the engine bay that balanced the two energy sources and replaced the traditional manual transmission. The compressed air tank could be recharged during braking or by the gasoline engine, reaching maximum pressure in just 10 seconds. Although these prototypes were not mass-produced, they showcased the potential of compressed air technology and revived interest in its development. Following Cho's lead, other manufacturers like GM have also begun experimenting with compressed air engines. Phil, now part of Stellantis, continues to explore this promising technology. With major players in the automotive industry investing in compressed air engines, we are on the brink of a revolution. This technology promises a future where vehicles are not only more efficient and practical but also significantly greener. So say goodbye to EVs and embrace the dawn of the compressed air engine era. Modern pneumatic engines function quite differently from those of old times. Unlike the MICE system, which was a simple single-stage engine, modern compressed air engines are piston-driven like internal combustion engines. However, these engines rev at considerably higher RPMs than their predecessors. Another key difference is the usage of springs, which pull the piston downwards once the air is introduced and return it to its original position once the air is exhausted. While compressed air technology might seem promising and tempting, these engines are not without their problems. One of the first and probably the biggest issues is efficiency. Even today, these engines remain extremely inefficient in every way. With that in mind, we must remember that EVs faced similar problems and look at them now, they have literally come light years ahead of what they were only 10 years ago, thanks to continuous development. This is why we still believe that compressed air engines have a place in the future of the automotive industry. Additionally, there have already been incentives to solve these issues as soon as possible. For starters, the low potency issue can be addressed by introducing high-pressure air tanks, which increase the energy density of compressed air and allow the car to produce greater power making it comparable to regular high-RPM gasoline engines. Two other issues are safety and range, which can be solved with one swap, by creating a more rigid chassis that also serves as a reservoir. Using materials such as carbon would be ideal, as it would allow the car to remain light, improving range while also being more structurally rigid than steel or aluminum. Unfortunately, carbon is extremely expensive for regular cars, which is why manufacturers might opt for thermoplastics, a solid cheap alternative to carbon. What seems to solidify the bright future of compressed air engines is the fact that countless small and large companies have delved into creating one in the past two decades, 
For example, an Australian company called Engineer made rotary engines powered by compressed air. This engine, known as the DP motor, has been featured on various documentary programs and has already seen limited use with boats and burden carriers, and it can also be used in cars. Additionally, Armando Russi patented his own version of the engine back in 1990, and his prototype car managed to cover 60 miles on a single tank. Ironically, this car was assembled in a shed, which makes us wonder how good these engines will be once adopted widely. So with that in mind, it's time to ask, will we see the widespread adoption of compressed air engines? This topic is iffy to say the least. While they weren't as successful as Toyota expected them to be, they are still a fascinating engineering venture. Furthermore, the generally rising interest in revolutionary zero-emission engines exists because whoever manages to bring to market such a power plant will be able to set a foothold in the automotive world. By doing so, this company will become dominant, automatically acquiring the crown for themselves. Just imagine what the public would do if we finally got a zero-emissions engine that costs literal pennies to run everyone would want it. However, not everyone will be on board. The truth is that oil and now lithium cost quite a lot of money and bring in significant revenue to many companies and corporations. As a result, switching to a completely renewable and incredibly easy-to-acquire fuel source, such as literal air, would be quite problematic for them, as they would lose the substantial revenue they make now. It isn't for no reason that oil is also known as black gold, nor have countless conflicts for oil been waged without reason. Plus, despite various patents concerning compressed air engines, none have been taken seriously by any car manufacturer. This is highly suspicious, especially given that research proves this engine type would be incredibly good for the environment. The curious case of Stanley Allen Meyer, who designed a water-powered engine, only seems to confirm this, shortly after going public. Meyer mysteriously passed away, and his invention, along with the schematics, was stolen from his house. According to his brother, who was by his side during his final moments, Stanley claimed that business investors poisoned him before he closed his eyes and never woke up. This tragic case might be eye-opening to some and demonstrates the challenges faced by those dedicated to making the world a better place. In fact, Toyota's all-new engine has turned the automotive industry upside down. It offers zero emissions while being conventional practical, and cheap to run. Toyota is too big a company to remain silent and intimidated by oil and battery companies, which is why this technology might actually see the light of day in the very near future. What do you think about this? Let us know in the comments section.